Hey guys, I'm Nick and in today's tutorial we will check how to quickly make sort of a plastic wrap effect in Houdini and render it in Octane. I will be setting up the lights and materials in Cinema 4D, but as always it's up to you where to render your 3D, whether it be Houdini or Cinema 4D or even Blender. If you enjoy my tutorials and want to support me, best way to do that is to subscribe to my channel, like this video and somehow YouTube now values comments much more than anything else. So just leave me a comment, tell me what I should cover in next tutorials, let me know if there were things that aren't clear to you, I will do my best to explain it. Alright, so let's get to this super easy setup. So I started with this Benjamin statue which is insanely large and somewhere I don't know where in the space. Then I applied transform, just scaled it down, then applied transform to just move it up and it's a really cool expression here it's a minus dollar sign y min and basically it makes the lowest point of your geometry stick to the zero on y axis uh, this transform yeah i think it's just some sort of manipulations uh, rotations and scaling then i reverse the normal so it looks like normal mesh and then obviously I remeshed it because it's a bit too dense for a vellum collision geometry simulation. And also I've touched a uh, little well, ROP Alembic export, so when I will be assembling the scene in Simum 4D, it won't be like all over the places, all over the scene, uh, it's just in one place. And then I added a sphere. Um, it's basically, yeah, a pretty dense sphere. It's primitive type set to polygon. Uniform scale set to 9.3, frequency to 50, and basically, yeah, it's a, it's a bubble, uh, and we have our Benjamin Franklin inside that bubble, and then I added a mountain node, which displaced the sphere in sort of random way, and here I just up the height, uh, checked the center noise, element size set to 8, and max octave set to 3. Then I transformed the sphere, I shrinked it on Z axis, no, X axis, and basically, yeah, translated, I shrinked it maximally, so we don't have, like, much gloss leftovers, <laughs> if we can say it like that, but basically, yeah, uh, let me demonstrate it here, like this, so I translated, rotated, scaled a bit, um, so it's just, yeah, we don't have any protruding parts of our Benjamin Franklin and it's inside this sort of a bubble. And now let's simulate the gloss. We dropped a vellum gloss, basically constraint type set to gloss, mass set to calculate varying, uh, thickness calculate uniform, drag, tangent drag, everything is default. And here in the stretch, Stiffness set to 1 or 10,000, basically 1 multiplied by 10,000. Compression stiffness 1,000. And output group is actually called stretchy, because why not? And also because I will share with you a bit later. And stiffness is set to be 1 multiplied by 0 0.0001, basically, yep. Yeah, this this one i think that's that's pretty much it inside nothing and the volume solver all right so for the solver sub steps everything left like like it is now we go to the forces and here in the friction static threshold should be five and dynamic scale should be one gravity i was just playing around and that's why it's minus 10 but default is minus 9.8 i think which works perfectly and here, let's dive inside of our Vellum Solver and see what we got here. So, there are two main things that we should consider. First of all, it's pop axis force. And basically what it is, it creates a swirl of wind or of, like swirl of force that makes our class to kind of swirl like it was in the tornado or something. And in this particular example, I'm using this shape with a center being at Y 3.9, 
radius 12 and height 13.8 and speed orbit speed is set to 3 suction speed set to 3 also and we are we don't have any sort of fall off bindings inputs nothing like that and let me just play the simulation and check what we've got oh first of all let me disable this constraint property tag and then yeah let's just check so it's kind of swirling it already looks kind of kind of nice but we want to take it a little bit further so let's drop a volume constraint property and here we must specify that we are working only with our group called stretchy you can call that group as you like but uh in this particular example it's it's really crucial to separate the constraints we are going to work with and here i'm just animating the rest length scale from 1 to 0 0.2 at frame 90. so what it does it shrinks the clause and basically you could have even skipped the pop axis force and use just this one because it's basically you know that like thermal plastic thing that basically the plastic if it's heated it shrinks and basically the same thing is going on here let's pop out and just check what we what we've got here i think we don't need this one so it's shrinking and also it's rotating and i think we can yeah get so many protruding details here so And you know, as it's shrinking, it will lose these wrinkles here because it's it's like it's shrinking too much here and here, and that's why it's basically creating a tension here. And that's why I'm just going to use like I know maybe frame. I think I use frame 26. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Then we can drop a volume pulse process node, and we can just smooth everything out. Looks pretty good it's uh there is a bit of spatial blur subdivision method set to be loop and subdivision depth set to be two that's basically it we wrapped our stature in some sort of thin plastic or even even a cloth a silk maybe so now let's drop a rop alembic node and export this current frame and now let's open up Cinema 4D and I will show you how I set up the subsurface scattering material for plastic and set up my lights and render it out. So we are in uh, Cinema 4D and let me show you how I set up this scene. I'm using two materials. One is corroded cooper and uh, basically it's our stature. This is how it looks like. I'm using uh, just uh, some sort of studio HDRI and for just nice reflections and highlights i use a uh, light source the like backlight and here's our cloth which is also just imported as an alembic since this one is not an animation you can just make it editable hit the c and then maybe use any sort of these modifiers but basically yeah this is how it looks like we have all these nice wrinkles and yeah now let's talk about this subsurface scattering material because we have some things that i want to clarify so in roughness it's set to 0.5 reflection set to 1 and is a trophy or film layer or bump in bump i just added octane noise yeah and in displacement opacity nothing 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 and in medium we have this random walk medium and huge thanks to guy from new plastic i think i found it on his channel about this uh, random walk medium and it's far better than scattering or absorption mediums it's just easier to work with and to modify it's not like you are kind of trying to guess what's what's happening and here basically yeah the density is one well i'm set length is default four and albedo color is this off white beige maybe um radius set to five and yeah may maybe some sort of like dirty plastic or something but yeah i think it it feels feels pretty good and also in camera i'm using a bit more exposure for octane camera bit of highlight compression gamma is set to 0.9 saturation point 
acceleration set to 1.1, a bit of hot pixel removal, and I'm using some sort of like custom LUTs. LUT is also included in the project file, so again, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider supporting me by purchasing. It's just a couple bucks for this wall setup, and it's pretty easy to put your own stages or geometry or any sort of things inside of that Houdini project and it will shrink wrap it easy and fast. Alright guys, that's all for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. I will be back very soon. Bye!